everybody. Welcome back. Devin the OG, the original Grognard, and I'm sitting back here, Dan. We're looking at Carrier Battles for Guadalcanal from Avalon Digital, a game I kind of covered when it first came out, oh, probably six, seven months ago. It's been a couple patch updates and some couple major changes, and, well, not major changes, but major additions, and there's a new DLC that's just been released. I want to go ahead and give a look at it real quick. One of the biggest things that has changed is uh, somewhat of the graphics in Inside the game uh, so when we go in and we we see take a look at the game we're gonna see some new graphics styles that they put UI has been cleaned up a little bit and there's a couple of the just little minded details I want to get into the, but the first thing I wanted to get into uh, is the new DLC oh you know what let's go and go over some of the new stuff that's been released first uh, there is now Chinese and Japanese language support uh, for those people in those countries that want to read it in their native language also let me see if I can find it nope that is not it anyways let's go to a new game let's pick a scenario Ah, oh, look at this right here. What's this? Ah, it's no longer solitaire play. We do now have PBEM available in the game. So you want to take a look at that if you want to get into some carrier and carrier action with some of your friends. That is now an option available to you. So that was really the, the one of the biggest things that they've changed uh, from, from the previous patches. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the new DLC, the Seaplane DLC. So let's go into the rules, up into advanced, into seaplanes, and you're going to see that some of the graphics have been clean, cleaned up a little bit better. So, but anyways, here we go. Managing seaplanes. Uh, by default, seaplanes are managed by the program. Can't see and interact them. Uh, normally, that's how it works with uh, uh, if you don't have the DLC. The ships just send the send the <laughs> seaplanes out on their own if they're if they're uh, like a cruiser or battleship that has seaplanes or if there's uh, a seaplane tender or seaplane base on the map already. But now, if you get the seaplanes DLC, uh, you'll see all owned seaplane bases on map. You can assign just like normal aircraft. Uh, establish temporary seaplane sea bases with seaplane tenders. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, some changes with with the AI. Uh, and so here's what it looks like a seaplane base looks like now. Uh, it's got this half white, half orange marker on it, so that can that, so you can immediately tell that it's a seaplane tender. And if you notice, also over here on the counters, they also have this white and orange marker <clears throat> to indicate that it's a seaplane capable ship. And then of course you've also got no, that's troop transport. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, maintenance capacity limits the number of seaplanes which got, operate per phase. <clears throat> Anti-aircraft value, obviously, and may operate any kind of seaplanes and coastal defenses. Uh, can be it can be attacked, reduced by ground strike and shore bombardment, although it can never go below zero. And 20% chance to repair one point at the end of each phase, pretty much kind of like how you know, any air base operates. Uh, so we've got di two different types of seaplanes units now. We've got the movement factor in white, indicated as a large seaplane, it may only operate from on shore seaplane bases. And then if it's an orange, it's a smaller one, may operate on shore seaplane bases and onboard ship with orange hangar capacity. And then, of course, if you have it, you just click on the ship to enter air ops. Uh, and you can now establish a temporary seaplane base with a task force if all the conditions are met. Okay, well, first of all, you're, you're going to have to have a, a, a tender, uh, a seaplane tender to be able to do this. Uh, TF has spent the, uh, last, the full last turn in a seaplane. Plain spot hex, orange and white, also a coastal hex, that's good to know. Uh, hex is free of enemy T ever base. Would be kind of difficult to set up a, t uh, a temporary base if there's an enemy base or enemy task force in your hex. Uh, yeah, and right here, the TF contains at least one operator seaplane tender. It's carried. Air units are immediately moved to the base's hangar. Uh, so yeah, there. that's that's the quick update on seaplane tender. So what does that mean in game? So let's go ahead and let's start up a new game so we can take a look at this. Let's do Operation Watchtower. Let's go ahead and play as the US. We'll see some of the new graphics updates that have uh, been in included as well. All right, yep, man, scenario information, yada, yada, yada. We don't need that. All right, so here we have our map. I like having the hexes on. I know other people don't. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at these orange and white hexes. There we go. So here's 
where a C plane tender may create a C plane hex, also a coastal hex. So it means it is also a coastal hex. Uh, and there's a few of them out here. We can see one down here, a couple here up in Guadalcanal, off Guadalcanal, right there. And here's what an actual sea plane base looks like. And if you right click, of course, you can't really left click on it to see what the enemy has on it. But one of the things that they did add is now if you right click on something, it'll give you a breakdown of what you're looking at, what all the different values are, which is really great because it keeps you from having to go back into the rule book all the time to take a look at what all the numbers mean if you can't remember what the numbers are. And that's with pretty much everything. So let's go ahead and click on this unit. So we right click on the ship. It'll give us the type, I and mean, it gives the all the counter breakdowns just by clicking it in game, right here like this. You know, it's it's it that is probably one of the best things. I remember which one? What's that number again? I get so many games in my head, I get it confused. I have a hard time uh, <laughs> remembering what they are. Um, okay, so here on the U.S. side again, uh, uh, a seaplane base. You can click on it, and go into it, and this is a land base, so it can have these massively huge radius. Uh, uh, PBY search planes on it, sea planes. Um, and you will notice uh, one thing that you will notice is no longer a speed option for it. Uh, the uh, reconnaissance planes has been broken down into two speeds, slow and fast. Search planes from carriers operate fast, but the sea planes operate at slow speed. So you can't really even choose and that that cleans up a lot of a mess it was it was kind of a pain in the butt to try to figure out how fast you wanted everything it's just it's just a flat uniform it's either fast or it's a slow but otherwise you still have the same old search patterns that you can set up and send out and let's look at tf17 which is actually a seaplane tender there's the tender right there go ahead and click on it yep there transport life points yada 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 seaplane tender uh, click back on it, open it up, and again, now this is one of the one of the new graphics that they had. Background graphics for this splash screen used to be just the carrier right here, but they added a couple ships into it. Cleaned it up a little bit, made it look a little bit nicer. The, the last splash screen was a little bit boring, but, you know, here you've got your hangar. And this is what task force you're going to want to use if you want to want to put a seaplane tender base down. So you'll want to take that that task force and get it to one of these coastline hexes, which is also a uh, hex which you can put a seaplane base down and plop it right down. Command pops up and it takes about a turn for it to get up and running. And there you go. Um, let's see what else is they kind of change. Let's take a look at, yeah, so here's, here's the background graphics again. Uh, they changed the graphics also for the uh, shore, shore installations. So we've got some new graphics for that, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that I just wanted to go in and give a quick look at the new DLC that just was released uh, for Seaplane Tenders. That's a really cheap DLC. It's $2.99. Um, I mean, it's come on, that's, that's a cup of coffee. Gives you a little bit more tactical uh, flexibility, adds a little bit more realism in it. And uh, again, it's a cup of coffee. If you like Carrier Battles for Guadalcanal, you're gonna enjoy this new expansion. It just adds some new stuff. It changes how searches work a little bit. Uh, it makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to run and operate. And I think that's about all I got. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And I will see everybody later. See ya!